Once, a time, once upon a time, there was a 14-year-old girl, me. Indeed, I was a troubled young girl with daddy issues, but I will always be counting my blessings for what I have been through. I was adopted into the States when I was four. I always felt like there was something missing. I attended school in Coronado all of my life. It wasn't until high school when I finally got the courage to ask my mother to put me in another school. I ended up going to the MAC Project Charter School in Chula Vista. This would mean I would have to catch a bus, a trolley, and then another bus to get back home. Constantly, guys that range from 20s to maybe late 30s would approach me. I'd either embarrass them by saying in a loud voice, I'm 12 years old, get away from me, you creep, or I'd walk away from them. Some, even in cars, would beep, pull over, and tell me how they would love to have me on their money team. Living in Coronado all my life, I wasn't so familiar with street lingo till one Friday morning. I was all dolled up for school when this tall guy approached me. He decided to sit just a few inches away from me, introduced himself as Trey. He was 6'4 and had too many tattoos to count. He had four gold canine plated teeth. In a soft voice, he leaned in and whispered in my ear, Ma, you're way too pretty to be out here alone. I remember turning pink in my cheeks. Did this tall, pretty boy, swag looking guy really think I'm cute? Trey took me by the hand and led me to a park. I followed without a care in the world. I thought of him as exciting and adventurous and everything he did, I wanted to do. We met up with his friends. Between blasting music, smoking weed, and drinking, and watching other girls pull out wads of cash from their bras to give to their boyfriends. I had so many questions. It got late and I finally realized that I had to call my mother to tell her I was okay. I wanted to stay with Trey longer, so I made up a story that I was going to be spending the night with my friend. My mother trusted me. <laughs> she didn't think I'd lie to her. Trey was happy when I told him what I had done. He kissed me on the forehead and said for the first time, that's daddy's girl. I just smiled. He passed me a cigarette and told me to sit down. Um, he got on his phone and walked away from me for a few minutes. After he hung, he hung up the phone, he announced to his friends that he and I had places to go and things to get into. Trey pulled up in the building that had big bold letters motel and a big number six. I asked him why we were here. All he said was, do as daddy says and put on this hoodie. So I did. Next thing I knew, I was in the hallway of the third floor of the motel. Trey, try, Trey opened the door with his key. I quickly grabbed his arm and told him I wasn't going too far with him. All he did was smile. As we walked into the room, I put my backpack down and sat on the edge of the bed. Trey came up to my face and pulled down his pants. He forced me to perform oral sex. I began crying. Next thing I knew, I bit him so hard that he pulled away and went to the floor. I started to run out of the room as fast as I could, with him only steps away from pulling my hair as I tried desperately to run away. I wake up. I'm awoken by the 17-year-old girl next to me yelling at me to hurry up and take a shower, that he will be here. I rub my eyes because I was crying myself to sleep. I turn to my side on a stained, disgusting mattress. I realize I was in the same hotel room I was for the last month. There were four of us. I was the youngest, and the girls were 17, and one was 18. I got close to the eldest. We were to call her Lola. She says she had been with Trey for two years. Every morning, she would be getting all dolled up and do her makeup as the three of us just sat on the bed and watched her. 
Lola would always remind us how to behave, what Trey liked and disliked. She would remind us not to roll down any windows in the car because he hated that. He would, she would tell us to always stay pretty and with makeup at all times. She would always remind us to do as we are told. Lola would stick up for us if we messed up. She would say, blame it on me. I'll take the hit this time. They don't know any better. Lola was comfortable. Lola just knew what to do. She had so many Prada bags and the biggest heels I'd ever seen. Next thing I knew, I saw him. The guy I thought once could be my first real boyfriend. Didn't turn out that way. He came out of the bathroom where Lola was, with a smelly cigarette in his hand. He approached each of us the same way, kissing us on the forehead. All three of us just stayed close to each other. Lola wanted us to think he cared about us. At the beginning, we were all scared and not comfortable, but people change, and they adapt. Every day, he would tell us how we were so lucky we were, we were to have such a caring daddy. He would always tell us how other peas really treated their girls. Lola would tell me to stop crying at least five times a day. She always did our hair and got us ready for the dates when Trey told her to do so. She would comb my hair and telling me, it gets fun after a while. Once you understand the money is worth, mostly the stuff is worth it. Just do everything you have to do to get the money for daddy. He will treat you so good. I mean, look at me. He barely hits me anymore. Trey did slap us on the face if he felt like the cash we would give him wasn't enough. Every day, Trey would be a different guy. He could be smiling and kissing us all day, take us shopping wherever we wanted, get us whatever we wanted to. Then other days, he would have a blunt and a beer in his hands and treat us like we were his punching bags. When he got super drunk, he would Talk about his life is so perfect, having bitches to do everything for him. He would always make it known how he felt on top of the world. Every night, he would take us to another hotel in different cities, California, Memphis, and Vegas. Some days, I could see the other girls' eyes, and they were getting into the money business, and they started to like it. We all love the shopping, the pampering, and the feeling of a father figure being with us. Eventually, I stopped fighting it. I did as he asked me to do. The more I did what he asked me to do, the more he kissed and hugged me. When I was behaving, he would tell me I was to sleep with him that night. He would put his arm around my throat and lay on top of me. He would hold me, he would hold on to me so tight I couldn't move. Most nights I would cry. I wanted to be home. I wish I was in my nice cozy bed, safe and comfy. I wish I could yell to the next room. Good nighty night, I love you. Trey would show how forceful a pimp he was every other day. He would have Lola take pictures of us with just bras and panties and sometimes with nothing. Trey would have her create pages to post us online. Sometimes when he felt like we were bringing in enough money, he would leave for a couple hours and come back and say, sexy clothes for all my bitches, which was really just spaghetti strap lingerie. Behave, be good daddy's girls. I'll take you out for another spree in a week if you do as I say for today. Trey loved touching us, grabbing us clothes, and would always say, you belong to me. It would give me the chills. The other girls were older and followed Lola's advice by calling it fun. Some would say, I love the money, plus we're spoiled. Some even started to fall in love and would daily pleasure him. To me, everything hurt. It hurt my heart being away from my mom. It hurt my soul. I didn't want to do it. 
I wanted to run away so many times. When I would, Trey would either send Lola to find me or he would search for me himself. When Lola found me a few times, she would tell me to stop trying to run away and that eventually he'd want to let me go. She would convince me to just go along with everything. She would always say how he was looking out for us. She would say, if you come back with me with a smile on your face, we can go and get new manis and petties. I always did as she asked. It was horrible if Trey found me. He would pull me by my hair into his car. He would then pull down his pants in the car and tell me to just take it as my punishment. I would never get as far as a few blocks before one of them would find me. Every time a John wanted me, Lola would get me dressed up and tell me all I had to do was, a con it was put a condom on his penis and then suck it. Then she would say to always offer my body for an extra $200. It all just hurt. When I would get back to the hotel rooms, I would take the longest showers and lock myself in the bathroom, hoping it was all a dream and it never happened. I will forever hate the smell of cologne, and I swear I will never marry a hairy man. <laughs> we would be in the room all day or on the road. He would repost us every day, new Johns would call, and Trey dropped us off like it was nothing to him. He would always remind us how lost he would be without us. Some of the girls eventually didn't want to leave. All I wanted was to go home. I never got comfortable, nor did I like any of it. One late afternoon, Trey got a text from a John saying he wanted me for $350 for 15 minutes. Trey kept telling me how shady he thought this John was, so therefore he stayed in the room. He hid in the bathroom. Next thing I knew, the John showed up. I sat on the bed. Then he showed me his badge. It read San Diego Police. When the police showed my mother an ad of me on the internet that they found is when they decided to do an undercover sting, which got me back into my mother's warm arms. I ended up graduating, and I had my daughter, who is almost two, who is two now. <laughs> my life has changed so much from my past, and it will never define who I am today. Thank you. Asmusena, Ravazula.